The Royal Bee by Francis Park and Ginger Park. Illustrations by Christopher Zong Wan Zhang. Author's Note The Royal Bee was inspired by the true story of our grandfather, Hong Soong Hong, when he was an illiterate boy in late 19th century Korea. Too poor to attend school, he would eavesdrop at the door of the rich children's schoolhouse until he was eventually allowed to attend. After he won a national academic contest, the governor of his province invited him to reside in the palace. There, he tutored the governor's young son while continuing his education. Years later, our grandfather attended seminary in Pongyang under the teachings of an American missionary and became a prominent church minister. In 1905, he wed our grandmother, Pang Sung Hua. Together, they became missionaries in China. In the days when kings ruled Korea, only the privileged Yangban children went to school. They wore fine clothing and carried handsome books. They competed in the royal bee at the governor's palace. They grew up to be scholars and noblemen. Song Ho was not among the privileged. He was a Sang Min boy dressed in rags, but the distant sound of a school bell made him dream of the day when he could read books and write poetry. Song Ho watched his mother wash her tired face in a bowl of water as the meager dawn light worked its way into their small hut. She stood over Song Ho and murmured, Be good today. I will do all my chores, Song Ho promised. Then she was off into the autumn cornfields. Song Ho's father had been a fisherman, but he died at sea years ago. Song Ho's mother worked as a farmhand harvesting whatever crop was in season to put food on the table. If she was lucky, she would bring home an armload of wilted fruits or vegetables. Song Ho began his morning chores. He swept the hut, soaked soybeans for supper, and washed rags in the mountain stream. As Song Ho squeezed the last rag in the stream, the sound of a bell rang deep in the valley where many Yangbins lived. Ding dong, ding dong. This was the sound of the school bell from the Sodang school. Ding dong, ding dong. The school bell rang as Song Ho carried the wet rags back to the hut. Ding dong, ding dong, the sound echoed in his ears. As if the bell were calling him, Song Ho followed it deep into the valley. At last he came upon the Sodang school, surrounded by golden rain trees. The school was more beautiful than he ever imagined. The bell was now still and silent for study time. Song Ho tiptoed toward the rice paper door. The shadow of a master giving instruction to a roomful of young Bond pupils rose before him. Suddenly, the door slid open. The master towered over Song Ho in the doorway. He stroked his long silvery beard. I am Master Min. What brings you here, child? I am Song Ho. May I be your pupil? The boy eagerly inquired. Master Min looked down at Song Ho in his rags and frowned. No, that is not possible. How can I grow up to earn a good living for my mother when I cannot read or write? Song Ho begged for an answer. The boy's bravery brought a lump to Master Min's throat. But rules were rules, and Sang Min's were not allowed to attend the Sodang school. Go home, Song Ho, Master Min said, sliding the door closed. But Song Ho did not budge. He kept his ear to the door and listened to Master Min's lesson. Little did Song Ho know that Master Min could see his small, huddling shadow through the door. But Master Min was a man with a kind heart. 
he took pity on Song Ho and allowed him to stay outside during the lesson. Song Ho learned about ancient kingdoms and great leaders. He learned about the royal bee, which was held every spring in the great hall at the governor's palace. Only one pupil from each school across the land would be chosen to compete in this contest of knowledge. That evening, Song Ho spooned Sui Bean soup into a bowl for his mother. She ate her soup as the steam warmed her weary face. My poor Song Ho, how I wish I could give you more in this world than spotted ears of corn. Song Ho did not tell his mother about his adventure at the Sodang school. Some day he would surprise her with all that he had learned. Later, Song Ho shucked the spotted ears of corn, thinking, If I learn how to read and write, I will give my mother golden ears of corn. Every day, Song Ho returned to the Sodang school, following the sound of the bell deep into the valley. He would hide behind a golden rain tree until all the finely dressed young Bon pupils were inside, until the school bell grew still and silent. Every day the sight of Song Ho's shadow at the door brought a tear to Master Min's eye. Every day he delivered his lesson loud and clear. Winter arrived. Icicles hung from the bare branches of the golden rain trees at the Sodang school. Song Ho huddled by the door, bent and shivering. His ears were so frozen, he could hardly hear Master Min's lesson. Suddenly, the door slid open. Come in, Song Ho, Master Min commanded him. Song Ho stepped into a room full of Yangban pupils. They gasped at the sight of the boy in rags. Song Ho has been very sneaky, Master Min explained. He has been listening to our lessons. We must put his eavesdropping to a test. Who was the father of our alphabet? One young Bon people questioned Song Ho. King Sejong, Song Ho answered. What is the largest island of our country? Another young Bon people asked. Teju Island, Song Ho replied. After each Yang Ban pupil in the classroom had tested Song Ho, Master Min spoke. Welcome to the Sodang School, Song Ho. The Yang Ban pupils respectfully bowed their heads and chorused, Welcome to the Sodang School. That evening, Song Ho spooned soybean soup into a bowl for his mother. She had spent her whole day collecting chestnuts from the ground. Now she drooped with despair. My poor Song Ho! How I wish I could give you more in this world than cracked chestnuts! Later, Song Ho roasted a pan of cracked chestnuts, thinking, If I learn how to read and write, I will give my mother perfect chestnuts! Spring arrived. As the golden rain trees bloomed gracefully at the Sodang school, Song Ho learned how to read books from cover to cover. He learned how to dip a delicate paintbrush into a black inkstone and write beautiful poetry on white scroll paper. Song Ho became a prized pupil. One morning, Master Min asked Song Ho to stand before the class. You have been chosen by your classmates to represent the Sodang School in the Royal Bee, Master Min announced. Song Ho could not believe his ears. Master Min proudly presented Song Ho with a bundle of silk. A gift from your classmates. A gift to wear to the Royal Bee, hailed the Yang Bang classmates. A gift of good luck. Song Ho slowly untied the bundle. Out tumbled a colorful ceremonial costume 
sparkling like a mountain of jewels. Song Ho bowed his head in thanks. That evening, Song Ho spooned soy bean soup into a bowl for his mother. She had just returned from a long day in the melon fields. My poor Song Ho, how I wish I could give you more in this world than bruised melons. Later, Song Ho sliced the bruised melons, thinking, If I win the royal bee, I will give my mother sweet melons. The morning of the royal bee arrived. The governor's palace stood among mountains that touched the sky. In his ceremonial costume of deep green and shimmering pink, Song Ho walked with Master Min through the iron gates. They entered the great hall. Master Min escorted Song Ho to a large gathering of Yang Ban pupils who stood before a panel of judges. And Master Min took his place in the audience. A hush came over the palace as the governor made his entrance with the help of a pearl-studded cane. From his royal seat, he proclaimed, Welcome to the royal bee. The judges will test you from their book of knowledge. A wrong answer and you will fall out of the contest. When the royal bee is over, only one pupil will remain standing the number one pupil in the land. One by one, the pupils were asked questions by the panel of judges. One by one, the pupils began to fall out of the royal bee. Hours later, only two pupils remained. One of the pupils was Song Ho. What mountain has 12,000 rocky peaks? One judge questioned Song Ho. Diamond Mountain, Song Ho answered. What far east country borders Korea? Another judge asked the Yangban people. China, the Yangban people replied. The royal bee went on and on. Darkness fell over the palace. The audience grew restless and the judges ran out of questions. Finally, the governor stood up and spoke. There is only one way to decide the winner of the royal bee. Each of you must answer this question. What does winning the royal bee mean to you? When the moon shines into the great hall, you must deliver your answer. When the moon shone in the great hall, the young Ban pupil stepped forward. I have studied all year long to compete in the royal bee, great governor. If I win, I will follow in my ancestors' footsteps. I will attend the finest schools and grow up to be a famous scholar. The audience clapped politely. Now it was Song Ho's turn. He took a nervous step forward and began to speak. My mother works in the fields every day from dawn to dusk, knowing in her heart there is no hope for people like us. Then Master Min took me in, and he broke the honored rule. He let a Sang Min boy like me attend the Sodang school. He taught me how to read and write, and I am at the Royal Bee. The gift of hope has now been won for my poor mother and me. Like the full moon, silence filled the great hall. Then the audience rose to his feet and clapped so thunderously that the great hall seemed to shake. Master Min shed tears of joy as the governor declared Song Ho the winner of the royal bee. You have shown great courage by speaking the truth, Song Ho, the governor stated. A royal ceremony followed. The governor presented Song Ho with a prize cow draped with silk and a necklace of glittery gold coins. 
The hour was late when Song Ho made his journey home with his prize cow. Across the mountains, he could hear his mother calling him, Song Ho, Song Ho, where are you? Tonight, Song Ho would surprise his mother with all that he had learned at the Sodang school and how he had won the royal bee and a prize cow and silk and gold coins. Just then, the sound of a bell rang deep in the valley. Ding dong, ding dong. This was the sound of the school bell from the Sodang school in honor of Song Ho. Ding dong, ding dong. The school bell rang as Song Ho hurried back to the hut. Ding dong, ding dong. The sound echoed in his ears.